Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama. It's your one-stop shop for all your photo needs. Check them out at adorama.com. Well, we've been exploring the exposure triangle and today we're gonna do something that's a little bit technical. There's some math involved, but don't be afraid. I'm gonna explain everything with some groovy graphics so it'll make it crystal clear. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Now, aperture values, remember we've talked about the aperture before, that's the thing inside your lens that opens and closes to let in more or less light and also helps us to control how much of our image is in focus. But one of the things that uh, throws people off a lot is the numbers. So we have numbers like f2.8, f uh, f4, f16. What does that all mean? Why do we have an F in front of that? And why is it that when we have something like F16, that means a small hole and an F2.8 means a large hole? It seems totally backwards. And then there's another, uh, another thing that throws uh, photographers off all the time. If you have a camera like this, that has a zoom lens. So this is a, a Panasonic FC1000, um, awesome camera. It's got a lens that zooms in and out. And one of the things that happens with zoom lenses is you might set the, the aperture value to something like 2.8, but then when you zoom in, all of a sudden, now it's at four. You didn't change anything. It just went from 2.8 to four. And when you zoom out, it goes back to 2.8. So what the heck is going on? Well, we need to explain all of this stuff and I'm gonna do that with an awesome animation. Well, let's take a look at this animation and this will make these aperture values crystal clear. Now, before we get there, I forgot to mention one thing. On the front of your lens, sometimes on the top, there's some information that tells you about the lens and the aperture. So on the front of this lens, it has a little thing that says one colon one four slash 50. And on the front of this one, it says 1 colon 2.8 dash 4.0 slash 9.1 dash 146. What the heck do those things mean? Well, the 1 colon means that there is a ratio between the lens and the aperture. That's all you need to know about that, and it'll make more sense when we show you the animation. The other number is the widest aperture value that that lens can have. So on this one, it's a 1.4 aperture value. That's as wide as it can be. And then the slash says 50, so it's a 50 millimeter lens. This is a zoom lens, and so it's got several values, and it's saying that this is a 2.8 to 4. So the widest aperture value is either 2.8 or 4, which I'm gonna explain in a second. And then the slash says this is a 9.1 to 146 millimeter lens. In other words, it's zooming from 9.1 to 146 millimeters. Now that is melting my brain. And so to make all of these little numbers crystal clear, I wanna show you this animation. So join me as we do some math. F22 or F2.8 is actually an equation where F equals focal length. Now to make things simple, I'm just making up numbers. The numbers that I'm using are for fictitious lenses, but it'll make things a lot simpler. So back to our animation. Let's say we have a lens that's 100 millimeters with an aperture value of two. That would be written as F forward slash two. If we replace F with our focal length, we'd get 100 divided by two. And the result of this equation is 50. That means that the opening in our aperture is 50 millimeters wide. 100 millimeters divided by two equals 50 millimeters. Now let's say that our focal length is 200 millimeters. Our lens is now twice as long. Now F2 would equal 100 millimeters. Let's do the math again. F equals 200 millimeters. 200 millimeters divided by two equals 100 millimeters. So that tells us that F2 for a 100 millimeter lens is not the same as F2 for a 200 millimeter lens. The openings are different sizes. Now let's pretend that we had a zoom lens that had a zoom range of 100 millimeters to 200 millimeters. And let's also pretend that the widest the aperture could open was 50 millimeters. Now if the aperture was all the way open and our lens was zoomed to 100 millimeters, the aperture value would be F2. How do we know that? Well, let's do the math. 100 divided by 50 equals two, or we can use the formula that I showed you before. Focal length divided by two equals 50. Now, what happens if we take this lens and zoom it to 200 millimeters? Since the aperture can't open any wider, 
that means that our aperture value has changed. Now let's figure out the math and see what it is. 200 divided by 50 equals 4. Therefore, the aperture value is now f4. Now if we bought this made up lens, it would have a label that said 100 to 200 millimeters 2-4. The aperture value does not remain constant throughout the length of the lens. Now, this is very common on consumer lenses because it costs more to make a zoom lens that has constant aperture values. Now if we wanted our fictitious lens to have a constant aperture value, that would mean that the aperture would have to get larger as our lens zoomed. The aperture would have to grow from 50 millimeters wide to 100 millimeters wide as our lens zoomed from 100 millimeters to 200 millimeters. So let's review. The aperture value is a measurement of the size of the hole that the light passes through in the rear of our lens, the aperture, relative to the focal length of the lens. So a small f number is a large opening and a large F number is a small opening. Well, congratulations, you survived a little math, and I hope you're better for it. Now remember that you can see more about the exposure triangle and aperture values at the Adorama Learning Center. And I, I just want to mention that this little FZ1000, this Lumix, is a fantastic camera. It's not mine. I'm borrowing it from my friend Lex. We're traveling all over the world together, and she wanted to step up from a point-and-shoot camera to something a little more robust. And I got to tell you, I have some jealousy about this camera. You can read reviews and more information at the Adorama Learning Center about it, but a lot of people have been asking, hey, are you shooting with this? I am, when I can steal it from Lex and borrow this. It's super lightweight and it's a perfect travel camera and it's very affordable. So just a little blurb about the Lumix. Well, again, I want to mention that you can subscribe to Adorama TV. It's absolutely free and you can see more about the exposure triangle and all the things that we've been talking about. So do that right now. Just click the link and subscribe. And thanks again for joining me. I will see you next time. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.